Yes, it's a schoolroom, a German schoolroom, but not the kind you're thinking about. There are no youngsters here learning ABCs. This is not a school for kids. Meet a freshman class. These Nazi tools are learning how to be spies. Take a closer look. You may be meeting some of them in America, because that's where many of them are going when they graduate, when they become ace espionage agents. They don't look so dangerous, do they? No. Don't kid yourself. Their weapons aren't the usual weapons of war, guns and knives and bombs. They have a better weapon, you. Yes, we mean you Americans. See, they've got you pegged already. Why? Because you're going to make their work easy. You're going to talk. And they're going to listen. You'll leave documents around where they can find them. Oh, you'll play ball all right. You trust anybody and tell secrets. You're careless and you talk too damned much. Sure, they're laughing at you. But if you think they're laughing now, wait till they get to America and you really make a fool out of yourself. Watch. Act them. Well, here's the teacher. Good morning. Hello. So, a complete attendance. That is good. Excellent. We have much to accomplish. Take your seats. Today again we discuss a familiar topic. American stupidity. You're tired of the subject, perhaps. Tired? Nine hours. May they continue to be so stupid. Always. Yeah. Rely on it. A few clever Yanks. Yes. Very few. The majority of Americans have not had the advantage of severe discipline. They are soft. And as a consequence, given to emotional excesses of friendship and trust. <laughs> Here's an incident to illustrate how our enemies talk, trust, and are criminally careless. All favorite American diversions. Three young men, an advanced detail from the same division headquarters, were en route to an American port of embarkation. Bill, Bob, and Jack. Perfect apple-cheeked examples of American manhood. Jack is having some difficulty with tobacco. What a pity. He's so young. Make your eyes smart, son. Kind of stuffy in here. Don't let him kid you, mister. He's train sick. What a hell of a sailor you make. Said it was kind of stuffy, didn't I? I'll be all right next week. Well, yeah. Well, keep this in mind. They haven't gotten around to paving the ocean yet. We don't want to wet our show all the way to... Uh, are you boys going overseas? We didn't say so. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. That's okay. You got it. Let's go. Ah, very wise, Bill. Never talk to strangers. That man might have been a German agent. But you're wrong. Here is the agent of the Reich. An excellent listener, too. He heard everything through this little vent. Information of troops going overseas. Incomplete? Yes. But the boys are becoming more cooperative. Chicago, all passengers change. Right. Pay attention, please. Dad, remember I named two flowers, roses and violets? Well, it's violets on Tuesday the 7th. You could come down by bus the day before. It's only a five-hour ride and we could spend the whole afternoon together. Oh, that's swell. All right, then, it's noon at the Harbor House. And remember, violets. Goodbye, Dad. Violets? Roses? Horticulture? Nothing that simple, my friends. Young Jack and his father have a secret code. 
He wanted to tell his fond parent where he was going, without revealing military information, of course. Good Americans never do that, do they? Didn't you charge me too much on that call, operator? Oh, that's the rate to go for it. I forgot about the tax. Sorry. What an ingenious Dumkopf our Jack is. What a childish attempt to evade security regulations. Galeport, was it? <laughs> I just said five hours ride to Violets. My dear stupid boy, even an ape could answer that. By Violets, you meant Port Haven. That's where the convoy sails from. Already we knew where and when. Next Tuesday, no, Jack? <laughs> so you are thirsty for the blood of that convoy. You find it amusing? Do not be over enthusiastic. Information was good, but insufficient. Hubert's are costly. We do not risk them unless our information is complete, exact. But the Americans will supply us with that. All you have to do is keep your eyes and ears open. They are most obliging people. And very devout, too. Also thick-headed. Instead of the state, the worship God. This simple little church is located in the town of Port Haven, important to us for other reasons besides prayers. Convoys, for example. Recall? Now here's that young idiot, Bob. You see the glow of pride on his healthy face. Religion did that. But if he wanted to get closer to his Lord, he is a much quicker way. He's lonesome. Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome, sir. Did you enjoy the sermon? Yes, sir, I did. It's the first time I've heard your minister. He was great. I'm a stranger in town. Yes, I guessed as much. One gets to know most of the faces around here. Uh, coming my way? Well, I don't know, sir. I'm, I'm heading downtown to the Harbor House, and uh, I don't know which bus to take. Well, the same one as mine. Uh, we catch it right here at this corner. Oh. Nebraska? Uh huh. <laughs> well, can you imagine that? My grandson's stationed there too. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, maybe you know him. Harry Gilpin. Gilpin? Gilpin? Oh, I'm afraid not. Parsons is a pretty big place. 30,000 men. Ooh, that big? Uh -huh. Well, then it wouldn't be likely you knew Harry. I wish you had, though. Oh, he's a fine boy. Uh, learning to be an aerial gunner. You'd like him. Aerial gunner? Yeah. Are you sure? The well, Parsons is armored. Well, it's someplace in Nebraska. Of course, I could be mistaken. Wait a minute, I've got Harry's letter right here. Hold it. Don't you think you're talking quite a bit? Do you know this man? Uh, no, sir, but, but uh, I didn't say anything. Oh, yes, you did. But I'm not discussing military regulations in public. Well, I hope there's no trouble. I'm sorry, sir, this is a military matter and doesn't concern you. The sergeant and I are going to talk this thing over. Uh, too bad. Just when you were giving us such interesting information, Robert. Doctor's ready now, Captain. Will you go in, please? Danke schön. Did the uniform deceive you? It deceived young Bob. He never imagined that some of Germany's best servants hide behind uniforms or an innocent doctor's office. A large belly ache for American security, yeah? Moffat, you'd have died laughing at this stupid soldier. I told him he'd be court-martialed if he didn't tell me everything. He thought it was a little irregular, but to avoid trouble, he talked. <laughs> grocery, grocery, he must have talked himself black in the face. <laughs> Such news. The 300th armored is moving out of Parsons by motor convoy and train. And these astonishing new tank destroyers, he mentions. Incredible. So, this division embarks here Tuesday. Do we know the destination yet? The number of transports and the route? Oh, be patient. He couldn't give me all that. 
but he's stopping at the Harbor House with two others who may be better informed. We have our friends at the Harbor House too, hey, Marford? Pay strict attention, please. We are going upstairs now in search of more facts. Here they are, the three little suckers, and how they grow with information. Jack, Bob, and Bill. Young Jack is daydreaming about tomorrow when his dear father arrives to pick violets, remember? Poor Bob is so worried. He wonders if the captain will report him for talking carelessly on the motor bus. <laughs> if he only knew. And let us not overlook our master sergeant, Master Willie. He's writing to a whack private in England, one of his many girls, to tell her that he's going to be there himself soon. But the census would not allow that. They examine all letters and envelopes under a strong light. Too bad. A date with Nancy could have been so nice. has an idea. There are more ways than one to skin a cat. Look at this. The young fool. He thinks the census will never find the message now. Watch. He's going to paste the stamp over it and Nancy will know where to look. So. You need another stamp, Bill? No matter. Get one downstairs. Clever boy, yeah? I think I'll work this town over. You guys want to come? No. How about you, Jack? Hit a few night spots, catch a show, maybe pick something up. They haven't rationed dames yet, you know. No, thanks. I'm going to turn in early. You go ahead. You do better alone anyhow. <laughs> you can say that again, suckers. Got an airmail stamp. Sure thing, soldier. Yes, sir. I want to send a telegram. Warm, isn't it? Yeah, plenty. And dull. Say, uh... Where does a guy find some sport in this town? Why, there's Barney's. Got a band and a floor show if you like it hot. Yeah? Uh, how about dames? That's Barney's specialty. Across the street, about two blocks down. Much obliged. Straight wire. Put it on my tail. Right away, sir.
enough for you, Willie? Good. Be too straight. Sit down. Drink up. This is what you want, isn't it? Drink all you want. Get mellow. Relax. Get careless. So you should do it. going to be with us long, soldier? A couple of days. Then overseas. Gee, all the nice guys are here. My brother's a transportation clerk on a transport. It's here now. He sails Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning? Well, that's the same time I'm going. What were you going to say? Uh, nothing. Oh, right, here's our drinks. <laughs> Some of the greatest aids to making these Americana talk are wine, women, and song. That is what they call having fun. Whiskey does it. Notice, most Americans can't hold their liquor or their tongues either. Have you spilled your guts yet, Billy? Yeah, of course you have. Hey, what's the matter, baby? What you blubbering about? You're going away, that girl in England, that whack. Did I say that? <laughs> Tell her that I'm coming back, ain't I? 
Sure, sure, we're all coming back as soon as we lick the pants off the damn Nazis, huh? Oh, <laughs> Baby, you just wait and see. Oh, we won't come back to us over over there. Oh, we won't. Honey, excuse me, I'll be right with you. Your fun is over, Sergeant. You're coming with us. Hmm? Oh, but listen, I got a date with a dame. Yeah, I that dame's got a date, I... too. Just a minute, sister. I'm a federal officer. Sergeant, this goes where it belongs, to headquarters. Yeah, but... Uh... Come on. She got away okay. Felton's trailing her to that new hideout by now. That's nice going, boys. Cover the phone back there for Felton's call. Here's Blondie's boyfriend. Where did you pick up that girl tonight? Wait, wait a minute. I don't get this. What has she done? Plenty. What's the address? Oh, well, it's apartment 2C, 44 West Water Street, but... That's I all. Don't see what... Come on, boys. Forget the phone. Sweetheart. That is a lesson for you. Do not be overconfident. Five valuable agents lost. Result, all our good work for nothing. The American intelligence officers upset our plans and changed theirs. High Command cancelled movement orders, issued new ones. No convoy out of Port Haven on the 7th now. But there was a new sailing date. Germany had to know. Time was short. What was the new date? Again, we had to rely on the Americans for the answer. Yeah. You think they ever learn? Never. In the United States, there's an unlimited supply of careless, slack-jawed imbeciles. Your attention, please. This is young Jack's father. He took a bus all the way to Port Haven to spend a few hours with his dear boy. But he didn't see him, because all military personnel had been cleared out of the hotel in a hurry. He didn't pick any violets either. 
Meet Jack's mother. He'd already gone, but he left this note to the hotel porter. Geraldine? We had a word from Jack. Not a thing. Just say goodbye. There's some message for you in it. Oh, that boy. I can't make head nor tail of it. Perhaps you can. Young Jack's sweetheart. She's very much in love with him. A common American stupidity, but so helpful to the interests of the fatherland. That was Jack's mother. He sent me a message. Come on, listen. Losing your buttons. I don't get it. Neither do I. He said to think of him on our regular date night and play his favorite record. That's the record. Let's see. Day after tomorrow, he'd have been taking me out. Sure, but what's waiting for the Robert E. Lee got to do with Jack? You've got me, Jenny. Waiting for the Robert E. Lee. Say, wasn't there a boat by the name of Robert E. Lee? Some kind of a boat, I guess. Sure a funny way to say goodbye. Not so funny. If you weren't stupid, young lady, you would know what Jack meant. He wanted you to think of him Wednesday, because that's when he's sailing. Not on the Robert E. Lee, of course, but on another ship. Uh, somebody figured it out. Look. We are racing the clock now. It's the last lap. And we lost it. The convoy slipped away before we could act. The Yanks gave us the slip. But there is still time. The office of the Superintendent Army Transport Service, Port Haven. You recall this young man? You met him in the cafe. He had a crush on the girl who preferred the company of a soldier. Right now, he's love sick and shock. He never suspected his girlfriend was an agent of the right. He's preparing a secret record of a convoy's movement from Port Haven. But his mind is not on his work.
Let's see what happens. Ridiculous. They don't tell us a thing. And the lengths they go with these security regulations. <laughs> you think they grow up. And Jack's friend Bill, do you know they broke him several ranks? He was transferred in disgrace to another unit. Just for writing some innocent thing under a stamp and talking in a restaurant. Really? What if he did? Suppose some spy did overhear it. I ask you, what good would that do to a spy? After all, this is America. Why, a spy couldn't get that information out of the country. How could he? Stuff and nonsense. They're going too far, if you ask me. We're grown-up Americans, not children. I leave it to you, my man. in the back, Mr. Selworth. Bill, what is it? A piece of carbon paper. We picked it up in the Port Haven headquarters waste. Something about a convoy. How's good sign it? Have copies made at once. Yes, sir. Yeah. A remarkable development from the weather experts. A secret weather station in the North Pacific. Another gift from the raw wastebasket. How absolutely perfect. You will relay this to our Japanese allies. This station should be within easy bombing range. Hmm? Well, Fritz, have you found anything of value? I think so. Some snapshots. Mm -hmm. All from tank personnel stationed out west. The boys ordered several prints. Thanks to our agreement with a certain developer, duplicates were on our for us. Some of the details uh, are unusually clear. Exceptionally so. It's been very difficult work, though, going through all this junk. But in lightning, Fritz, this is obviously a new model tank, similar to our Mark VI. Did you pass them on to Drexler? Of course. He's making microscopic enlargements of the finer points. Excellent. I don't know what we would do if the Americans didn't take pixels for us, huh? <laughs> you ready? Oh. <clears throat> it's 1234A in Root, England. They've arranged for air patrol contact off Newfoundland at 4545. I've located a fine position for our subs. I see. Men build this convoy pass here. Approximately dawn Friday. A few hours either way won't matter to our subs, of course. Not in the least. But how about radio conditions? Now, adequate. It's becoming difficult, but our forest station is still operating. Shall I raise them? At once. We have not a moment to waste. Of Newfoundland, forty five, forty five. We are getting somewhere. Oh, uh, nothing could happen, though, could it? Even if a spy heard something, what could he do? Nothing. You heard that cackling woman say that, didn't you? And in America, of all places. Yes, Germany has many good friends, not just in America, but in numberless places. They're always ready and eager for just such a moment as this.
And many U-boats, too, hungry for American shipping. Yeah, a delightful repast in waiting for them. Right here. Watch. <laughs> At last, the convoy. Fat, waddling ducklings, glutted with young American soldiers going overseas. What could be better? Just like shooting ducks in a pond, yeah? What a surprise for Davy Jones. these boys? Bob and Jack. They're not picking up Bibles or violets now, are they? Come on. They're fighting for their precious lives. They're not even talking for a change. Too bad, yeah? What do you say, boy? Half the convoy sunk. What do you say now, sucker bait? <laughs>